This is Seven National News and in our top story. The Red Crescent Authority has committed 213 million dirhams as a preliminary budget for its domestic humanitarian programmes in 2013. The budget, announced at a recent meeting by the RCA's Higher Committee on Domestic Assistance, represents a 45% year-on-year increase. The budget will go to programmes to sponsor orphans, provide medical aid, Ramadan rations, help for prisoners, students and the disabled, as well as iftar programmes, zakat, Eid al atta sacrificed meat, the maintenance of buildings and facilities, and to support educational and social institutes. The Federal National Council has approved the setup of a human rights committee that will discuss relevant legislations and to reinforce the UA's domestic and international efforts. According to news agency WAM, the FNC discussed 59 questions to government representatives and made 11 recommendations directly related to services provided to nationals, including healthcare, education, the economy, security, infrastructure, emiratization, salaries, pensions, loans and social issues. Additionally, on the 28th of January, the UAE will make a formal presentation about the country's human rights record at the UN Human Rights Council based in Geneva. Meanwhile, Emirati families across the UAE have fostered a total of 59 children as a part of the new family fostering project by Dar Zayed House for Family Care. 32 are in Abu Dhabi, 15 are in Al Ain, 6 are in Dubai, 1 in Sharjah, 3 in Russell Kema, 1 in Fajera and 1 is in Ajman. An additional 17 fostering applications for four children are currently under review. The latest technology available for health and medical care will be showcased in the next four days as Dubai hosts the 38th Arab Health from tomorrow. 83,000 attended the last year's event, a number that organisers expect to rise this year. 3,500 companies will be participating from 70 countries worldwide, a 200% increase from 2012. While these figures are all promising for the industry, the show has evolved into more than a trade show and features numerous focused sessions that aim to address rising health concerns in the region. That's according to Informer Exhibitions. One important thing about Arab Health is that the way in which the show has developed over the years, it's not, no longer just a trade show where businesses are meeting to, to expand their network of uh, distribution. It's now a much more end user focused where doctors, nurses, technicians, all manner of healthcare industry professionals can see new technologies, new products and how they're, they're going to impact their lives as well as the patients that they're treating. Every year we see all of our big giant healthcare companies such as Philips, Siemens and GE come back and showcase new products and uh, lines that they have for treatment of, of disease, making sure that they're focusing on the patient, how they're uh, diagnosing quick enough and obviously making sure that patient treatment times are kept as minimal as possible. Among the highlights of the four-day event is the Arab Health Awards. And launched about six years ago, it recognises the excellence of institutions across the Middle East. Organisers say there is an increasing number of nominations year on year, just one sign of the continuously improving quality of patient care among the region's hospitals and clinics. We're recognising things such as excellence in surgery, excellence in imaging and diagnostic, and obviously patient-centred care is one of the big awards that we're doing. The patient is always the centre of the care cycle and really important. It's good to see this year that two of the three shortlisted are, are Dubai uh, institutions, the Thalassemia Centre Dubai and the Dubai Diabetes Centre, both under the Dubai Health Authority. One thing as well you'll, you'll notice more of, I think the Dubai Health Authority is bringing in specialist hospitals now which is oncology, oncology specialists, diabetes, thalassemia, so they can treat disease prevalences in the area a lot better and hopefully keep the patients within, within Dubai rather than having to go elsewhere. 
Students of the Al Athba Girls School in the Al Kawanij area presented their outdoor knowledge park to the community today and were proud to contribute towards the sustainability of the UAE. Made out of 500 recycled tyres, the edutainment recreational area is made up from a range of car tyres that make up the tables, chairs and swings to smaller ones recycled from quad bikes, bicycles and even toy vehicles. Dubai Municipality, together with the Knowledge and Human Development Authority, contributed significantly towards the waste campaign and assisted the 248 students' initiative. The principal of the institute, Aisha Mohammed Nazrullah, stated that the park took three weeks to complete and is just one of many eco-friendly projects for the grade one to nine pupils. Municipality officials commended the efforts exerted from educators, parents and community residents and added that the Emirates should also be creative when it comes to general household waste. We have to increase our education and increase our awareness to the, to the public and the kids. Honestly speaking, the idea, the work behind it is not the municipality, it's from the kids, from the school itself. And this is a, a really, um, a, 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 as a result of, of, of uh, the education uh, the government is doing and, and, and everybody should should participate in it. I'm really glad to be here with the kids here and, and, and their entertainment and their education. They are using the, 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 the waste, to use the waste to, 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 to use it and educate themselves in the schools. I believe that, that 80 percent of the recycling should, do, should start from the houses and it should start from the schools and, and, and the kids and the people should, should do it themselves. And after that, the 20% will be the, the, the government side of it only. But, but really, it will help uh, in, in reducing waste. The, the aim is not only recycling. The aim is also reducing waste, to use the waste, whatever. And uh, uh, our environment is clean, uh, still clean, and I hope it will remain clean. And, uh, and finally, looking to other news, the UAE is gearing up to welcome global superstars Kanye West and Slash this Thursday. Hip-hop superstar Kanye West is returning to the UAE after three years this Thursday to perform a live concert at the Do Arena on Yas Island in the capital. West is set to perform tracks from his platinum album, including Gold Digger and Love Lockdown, to his latest collaborative studio album, Cruel Summer. And Slash, best known as the lead guitarist in Guns N' Roses, will be at the Dubai Tennis Stadium on the 31st, featuring Miles Kennedy and The Conspirators.